A short while ago, I took an Xbox Project Red controller and I turned it into something a little bit different. I actually replaced pretty much every part of it. I made it look completely different to the standard Project Red controller and I even gave it back buttons and hair triggers using kits from Extreme Rates. Now, after a little while, I've decided to change it a little bit and give it a fresh look because I've been using it for a while. And to do that, I have enlisted the help of Extreme Rates who have sent me a few parts that I thought might look interesting. I'm going for a gold look. It's the most outrageous look I've probably gone for a controller that I've modified. Now, what I'm gonna do here today is show you the parts and just very briefly how to do the changes. There are plenty of videos on my channel on how to change all of these parts on your controller, but I'm just gonna give a very brief overview of it to see or to show you at least how simple it is to make such changes and just refresh the look of your controller. So now that you know what this video is about, let's get into it. So let's start by taking a look at the controller as it was before I made these changes. Now we can see we've got a white look overall, very white look in fact, with some nice claw marks and blood on it. I really like this look. These thumbsticks are swappable and I, I really like the feeling of the buttons that I've got in here, the A, B, X, Y buttons. They look up close almost like pills, like paracetamols or something, but they feel really nice to touch. On the rear, we've got the grippy grips <laughs> and we've got the back buttons that I added, which are the extreme rates back button kit. And in the triggers, we've also got clicky hair trigger kits, which shorten the pull distance to a mere 1.5 millimeters. Now let's take a look at the actual parts that I'm gonna be swapping. First up, we have a faceplate or a shell and we are gonna be swapping the white shell with the claw marks for this gold and black number. Now, I I really like this. It's shiny, it's glossy, your hand sticks to it when you're playing, so it's not gonna fall out of your hands. I like the look of this. This is one of those rare patterned shells that I actually like. And to go with it, I wanted to go with a sort of gold theme. So to go with it, I've gone with this gold D-pad and also these nice gold bullet buttons that are made of metal. To complement the look on the rear, I'm gonna go for some gold grips, which <laughs> you are not gonna keep these clean. The fingerprints that you get on these are shocking. And also for the back buttons, I'm gonna go gold there as well. I'm gonna leave the back plate black because that's the kit that I have to use in order to have the back buttons, but the buttons we can swap easily. And then finally, we're gonna switch out the thumbsticks. We are gonna go for gold sticks <laughs> and we are gonna be able to put on a set of different thumbstick tops onto those. So we've got domed ones, we've got concave ones, and we've got short and tall sticks that are gonna go on those gold sticks. Here are all the tools that you get with all of the parts. You get everything you need. You get screws to screw the shell back into the back plate. And also you get the screwdrivers that you need to take the shell off and also to take out the circuit boards and to pry the grips off. Here's just a little look at the little document that Extreme Rate provide you with everything that they sell so you know the deal when it comes to warranties and how they look for your feedback. And let's start taking a look at how we make this change. Firstly, we pop the grips off the rear using this blue spudger. This is very, very simple if you've done it before. The first time you try to take these grips off, they're not gonna come off as easily as they are in this video. Because I've changed them before, there's no more tape holding them onto the controller, so that this is very easy. But the first time you do this, you will have to use a lot more pressure than you're seeing me use in this video. So do be aware of that. You need to use a lot of pressure for the first time you do it. You feel like you're gonna break it, but just persist. Now, next up, we take the battery pack out, which I have already done, and we are gonna get the larger of our two screwdrivers and take out screw number one in the center, screws number two and three on the side of the grip, and screws four and five on the side of the other grip. Once we've taken those out, the shell will just easily pull right off. I could have taken that thumbstick off to make that a bit easier. Lesson learned for next time. So now that shell is off, we can just simply pull the thumbsticks off of the controller. And there you can see we've got detachable ones on there already. We're gonna swap them for detachable ones, but just gold and black this time. And we are gonna swap all of these buttons and the D-pad here. Now, I do not have replacement triggers or bumpers, so those are gonna remain white. The first thing we wanna do now is just pop this center unit off and that will allow us to remove the bumpers. And we want to remove the bumpers so that we can easily take the inside of the controller apart and remove the circuit boards. Next, we take the bumpers off by simply prizing that little bit up so that it comes off of the latch. The other side will do the same, and that will allow us to just simply take the controller apart a little bit easier. Now, as we flip it over, you can see this is the circuit board and cabling that I've got installed for the back buttons. Now, if you don't have back buttons, you will not have all of this ribbon cable here. So you don't need to worry about some of these steps that I'm gonna show, but I am gonna just 
whip past those because this is more about changing a default controller. So I'm going to take that uh, ribbon cable off by simply prizing up this little latch that holds that ribbon cable in place, disconnect it, and that is the back free. If you have a default controller, the back will already be free. You can see in my other videos how to take out circuit boards. Here we are just getting straight to the modification. So once you've got those circuit boards out, we're gonna change the buttons, and those buttons will only go in one location. Each button has very specific notches. As you can see on the home button there, you've got a notch on the left, a notch on the right, they're different sizes, and that means it will only go in one way in one place. Now, notice there that those two buttons, the view and the menu buttons, actually have the same notches. I don't know if I ordered the wrong kit from Extreme Rate or if there was a mix up in the parts that they sent me, but that means that I will not be able to change that button on the left that you see because that's actually got three notches. Um, that's the menu button, I think it's called. So I'm going to leave that as it is, white, which is going to make the end result look a little bit funny. Next, we change the share button. Again, you can see it'll only go in one way. Now we get onto the A, B, X, and Y buttons, and each of those has different layouts. You can see the top button has just two. The one I just took out has four. The other two buttons have three, but they're different shapes and sizes. And what's useful here is on the backs of these new buttons, they actually tell you which button they are. So I know it's a B and an A, and that's something that I often used to struggle with when changing buttons is working out. So once we put all of those back in, we simply put the circuit boards back into place and put the rear back on top of the controller, flip it over. I've put the D-pad in there already. Now we just put the thumbsticks back into place. And once we've got those in place, we simply just put the shell back on. And then it's a case of flipping it over, screwing all of those screws back into place, putting the thumbsticks on, and then that's job done. Almost, we do just have a little bit more work that we're gonna do. So don't forget, we've got five screws that go into the rear. I did actually change the screws that came with the shell because the ones that were in the controller already were a little bit too large for the new shell. So I just went for the new screws and they're a little bit slimmer. We replaced the grips with our new stunning gold grips. They are very, very shiny. And then the final step almost is to change these back buttons. Now, if you've got this kit already installed, you'll know how easy it is for these buttons. They just pop right off and go straight back on again. Very, very simple to do. Pop off and put the new ones back on. Very, very easy. You can see we just get them into the right place, line it up, and then we just snap them on, and that's it. That is that button in place. And then we just do the other three in exactly the same way, just going around it. And the next step is to flip it over and put our thumbsticks on, because that is the last part. Now, it does look a bit funny having that one white button. It's disappointing, but it is what it is. And here it is. This is the new look controller the gold and black Xbox Series X and Series S controller that does also work on Xbox One. All the buttons, just give them a check, make sure they feel right. They still click, they still feel absolutely perfect. The bumpers, triggers are still good. The clicky triggers are still working as they're supposed to. And all of the bullet buttons press in and feel nice. There is the finished product. And it only took me about 15 minutes to do the whole swap this time around very easy, and the parts are not too expensive. I'll put links to them down in the description so you can go and buy your own. Um, you can buy them from the Gaming Cobra store, which is Extreme Rates public web store, and you can get a 10% discount using code 2 B. I'll put that in the description. And also, if I can find some Amazon affiliate links, I'll put those in the description as well, depending on what you prefer. Anything that you buy once you click to Amazon using one of those links um, helps support the channel. So that is the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been a little bit inspirational to you. I appreciate that designs are very much uh, eye of the beholder when it comes to how they look and whether or not you like them. I do maintain my belief that it's very difficult to find a shell that has a pattern to it where the other components actually look right with it. When you're buying funky colored buttons um, and thumbsticks and D-pads, it is difficult to find a color balance that goes well with a patterned shell, in my opinion. So thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, all of those YouTube -y things, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.